Check it out. NATO had to pack a suitcase for this fishing mission because the boys are going on an aeroplane. I'm about to go around to Milan's, pick him up and all of his bags, and then we're off to the airport, jumping on a plane and going to the Chatham Islands. Milan went to the Chatham Islands on a land-based fishing adventure about this time last year. I made a video out of it, chucked it on YouTube, and we got contacted by a guy, Brent, from within Chatham Air Tourism. And uh, he's like, boys, if you ever wanna go back to the Chathams and make another video, we will cover the costs of your flights. So this one is all thanks to Chatham Air. I am really, really looking forward to this one. Milan is, again, as always, talking about kingfish, but I'm hoping to see anything other than kingfish, like trumpeter, harpooker, blue cod, moki, power, and everything else that the Chathams has to offer. And I'm really looking forward to having some new scenery to film. The footage that Milan brung back from the Chathams last year was epic. And he didn't have a drone, and I got a drone, so can't wait to put the drone up and capture that place and all of its beauty. We are there staying with brother Toby and his partner sister Tiffany, and they've been living on the island now for like a year and a half. And when Milan done his first trip over there, it was a little bit hard to go fishing because you need to cross private land to get to a lot of the coastline there. And since then and now, Toby has met a number of locals and has got access to some new spots. So this one is gonna be very, very cool. And this one is proudly brought to you by Wise Angler Hooks. By buying Wise Angler Hooks, you are supporting myself and Milan and giving us the time and energy that we need to create the lateral line. Chur chur, my brothers and sisters. Milan's time friggin' good knots. And Toby's trying to turn his drone into a fishing weapon. I'm learning Malaysian at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you did it, Toby! I did it, NATO. You just dropped the bait. I, I double functioned. <laughs> um, and we're just walking around the rocks to a place called Whalers Bay. So this has been pretty cold. Small fry. <laughs> <laughs> That's my son's sense of humour. <laughs> Look at all this flash camera gear. I'm getting shown up. Might need a can to start, you bastard. <laughs> Yay, Milan's never driven a manual motorbike before. He's trying to figure out the little gadget gadget. First day on the island has started much like any and every other day. Coffee, breakfast, organize some gear. And then what was a little bit different than normal was a forecast for an hour and a half ride on a motorbike to get to our very first fishing spot. But to put a few interruptions into that motorbike ride, like dead whales on the beach, which had uh, me like very, very interested, kicking around and having a look, and some petrified wood sticking out of the bank, and a couple of critters 
for Milan to catch and have a play with and that hour long ride was a little bit longer than Toby's forecast. But we have now arrived at our very first fishing spot for this trip which is a river coming out of a massive inland, looks like a lake but obviously it's getting fed from the ocean so it's bracken water, salt water, a big pool. Apparently there's a lot of kingfish in there, sharks have been seen in there. But we are fishing the river that leaves this big lagoon out into the main ocean. Toby said all manner of fish live here. They have seen kingfish, sharks, the mighty kahawai, and piper and flounder and yeah, just lots of stuff. But um, this stage of the game, this stage of the game being like to 25, 3rd or 24th of February 2024 I'm yet to eat fresh fish this year so anything and everything that I could eat is going to put a big smile on my face and at some point we'll be doing just that eating it but right now just go see what the boys reckon see how long it takes them to catch fish drone will go up hopefully I can spot something in this big lagoon to film sharks and kingfish and whatever else there is a fair bit of wind around, it is very very overcast so the conditions for the drone aren't the best but as always I will do my best and yeah just chilling out on the island having fun it's going to be awesome Milan's hooked the first fish of the trip. You hooked up, Milan. Hooked up. Whoa, look at the Whoa, that is huge. Toby's got one too. Massive car by the one Milan's got. Quite ready for live baiting. <laughs> Milan's one's huge. You got like a Kuma deck one, man. I don't know what I got. It was huge when it jumped out of the water. I thought it was a kingfish, but it's not. Just the biggest kawai I've ever caught. Yeah. It'd be like a three kilo kawai, wouldn't it? Yep. Look at the strip line. What happened? <laughs> and uh, just jumped again. Toby's hooked into his third kawaii and Milan hasn't even got his one anywhere near the beach. He's got a hog of a kawaii. So yeah. It's probably a world record I reckon Toby. <laughs> <laughs> I've never fought this, a kawaii this long before in my life. <laughs> Might be done for. Might be done. Oh, it's a fatty. Holy jamoly. Look at the size of that. <laughs> yeah, I reckon that's the biggest kawaii you've ever caught, man. I cannot get that kawaii to look as big as it is on my phone screen. It's that's just... That's a size 11 boot. That'd be like four kilos, right? Yeah, I reckon so. A four kilo kawaii. Put a big bait on, hopefully the car wide. Whoa, that's sharp, Milan. I don't think that's your knife. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> Richie gave it to us from HPA. It's a, 
Oh yeah, so it's new. It's new, that's why it's so sharp. That'll that, explain it. Stay sharp for you though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Here comes Toby's little machine. Can you remember how to do it? I think so. We did have a little practice last night. <laughs> well, I had no problem lifting that up. Dropped it. I need some more tuatuas now. You can put some tuatua bait out and catch a gurnard. Catch a gurnard? Catch a gurnard. Yeah, catch a gurnard. For the species count. Did you see my amazing effort? Yep. You happy you got him out there? You are getting bites. Yeah. I'm sure they were bites, yep. Yeah. Yay! Did you catch a gurnard? I caught a gurnard. The drone caught a gurnard. The drone's <laughs> name's Toby. Oh wow! Go Toby! Here I thought we were having kawaii for dinner. You gotta run, Milan. Never seen an Saltiki empty so fast. <laughs> gotta run kingy, from a drone. Got kingy fishing here. I wanna see another um, Gurnard. Milan's had a bait, Eden. Wasn't the shark or the kingfish I was hoping for, though, I don't think. No, nah, what I've seen looks like the mighty stingray. Got a good bend on. Must yep. be a good one. It's getting hot, mate. Got a huge barb on it, mate. Look at it. Yeah, it's a massive barb. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed every little piece of our day number one on the Chatham Islands. Right from our very relaxed start to the day with the alarm clock ringing at 6 a.m. and then breakfast, no real rush to get out of the house, and then an awesome motorbike ride. We caught some fish, got some food, and then Toby went for a swim, and Toby managed to spear with his knife a couple of flounder to add to our gurnard and kahawai for dinner tonight and then we were off had something to eat and just chilled out watched the clouds roll over the sky and then we were headed back toby had a spot that he wanted to go to to catch kingfish and me and milan were on the motorbike charging down the beach and milan goes do you want to put the drone up and get some nice running shots of the motorbike from the drone and i'm like yeah good idea stopped put the drone up I literally only got one sort of reasonable driving shot of the motorbike and then Milan's like, oh, is that a big school of fish just out off the off the beach? Flew the drone out there, sure enough, big mob of kawai, big school of kawai, just like what we were fishing back into way down the beach here. Then spotted a barracuda, so I was like, come on man, catch the barracuda. <laughs> Yes, it's a barracuda, but as a cameraman and someone who wants to film things, barracuda make good filming subjects. But the boys tried and 
ultimately just couldn't get a lure close enough to that barracuda. But then guess what? <laughs> I spotted three big fish in amongst the Kawai school and instantly my little heart started racing. Are those kingfish? Are those kingfish? And yep, sure enough, they were kingfish swimming down the beach straight at us. So the boys are off the motorbike. I just kept the drone in the air and kept the drone directly above the kingfish and followed them down the beach and they were coming towards us and long story short those kingfish turned and started swimming into the beach I had the drone positioned right above the kingies and Milan managed to get a cast with an eye shot and they ate <laughs> and he hooked a kingfish and fought a kingfish and the other two were hanging around Milan's kingfish for quite some time, enough time for Toby to get a cast in and the two fish shot off on his lure and if I'm honest I panicked and wasn't able to keep the drone pointed where it needed to be pointed and film that strike but they didn't hook up. Anyway, we got a fish, a kingfish on the beach that Milan caught with a stick bait off the beach. It was super, super cool. You got a kingy. I did. We did it. We did it, mate. Hi, Steven. We're gonna love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna keep it, eh? You wanna keep it or let it go? Oh, it's up to you, mate. I'll let it go. Toby apparently doesn't need any more meat, so um, that kingfish got set loose, and now the boys are super, super keen. It's like, Nato, get the drone back in the air. Let's hunt down those last two fish and see if we can catch another one. So that is us. I'm going to put down my phone, put the drone in the air and go and see if I can find a couple more kingfish and then hopefully Toby can catch one. That'd be awesome. I reckon spotting kingfish with the drone and then watching the boys run down the beach to get ahead of the fish and then they had to wade out in the water far enough so that they were able to get a cast, were able to cast a lure to those fish and then hooking those fish and landing those fish was the best beach style fishing anything that I've ever done. It was real real good fun and really really productive but because i had to stay at the drone controls the entire time to keep the location of the fish visible to the boys meant that i couldn't film it in the way that i would like to have filmed it multiple angles i was stuck to the drone i did manage to get milan's fish the first fish eating his stick bait but the second time around when there was a pack attack and both of the boys got hooked up, I was changing drone batteries. So yeah, it was a little bit of a tough one to film, but we have some epic weather coming in a couple of days time. And in a couple of days time, <laughs> both myself, Milan and Toby 
I was super, super keen to get back down on the beach and give it another crack. And this time round, it'll be the drone in the air. I'll be on the drone controls. And then the boys can just take turns with my phone and just get that second angle and get audio. And Milan reckons the strikes from those fish from where he was standing when he was fishing was epic. So um, yeah, two cameras rolling. And I think we'll do a much more entertaining job of filming that. But all of that was yesterday and today is a whole new day. And today has started much the same as yesterday. Really, really cruisy, no need to get out of bed stupid early in the morning. And then the boys went off on a find somewhere to go fishing mission because we got a huge swell on one side of the island today and the wind on that side of the island is offshore and it'd be nice to be out of the wind. So to try to find somewhere out of the wind and out of the swell today has been a little bit tough. We've checked out a few different places. I've had the drone up and mucked around, found a few shark teeth down on a little bit of beach that's full of shark teeth. So that was, well, keep us entertained for a little while. But anyway, we have found a spot that is out of the swell and the wind is at our backs. And the boys have already organized their gear and headed down onto the rocks down here behind me. They are right now just down here fishing and I am yabbering to you to get the uh, story of it all up to speed and then I'll organize my gear and get down there and try and film some fish. Toby reckons this is a spot where we're gonna, well number one, get some power and eat some power while we're here on the island. But number two, Toby reckons we'll catch a number of different colorful and very interesting fish here. It isn't one of them big fish haunts that Milan loves. It is a spot that Nato the cameraman is really gonna enjoy filming all the little bits and pieces by the sounds of it, which is very, very cool. So I'm about to go and do just that. In the time that I've had the drone up and flying around up in the hills, the boys have decided they're gonna move from here, which saves me getting wet feet, which is great, around to here. One of those moments, NATO. <laughs> 45 degrees on the back and 30 degrees in the track. <laughs> it's cold. But apparently it's the warmest it will get all year right now.
Soft baits out. What is it? Nudie brink. Limp it, limp it's in. Limp it's in. Monster cod. First cast with the limpet and mainland's hooked up. Did get a few bites on the soft baits, but. Oh, big wrasse. Big wrasse. Oh, nice. Look at all the lice on him. That is a cool fish, man. Covered in lice. Oh, yeah, you can see them squirming all over it. Okay, I'll put them in the rock. Oh. Straight out. <laughs> I like it. They're straight into it, eh? Susan was right. One of the ladies here, local, is like, here, use one of these limpets for bait. You'll catch fish on that. I think this is almost a guarantee. Well, guaranteed bite anyway. Guaranteed bite. Oh, one bite, two bites, hooked up, oh, lost them. Took my bait, I think they don't Oh no. Oh, not that there's a shortage of them, but. Oh, you got that one, did you? Or was that the bottom fish? Weed okay. fish. Strip me. Gone. Gotta go get another limpet. You gotta be real fast, because they suck on otherwise, eh? Like you can lift them, but you watch this. Oh yeah, it goes up. Can we do that on another one? Like you can't, wait till I get it you can't even frickin' move them, this one. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. So you tap him, and then that's it. That's oh, look at the water coming out. Yeah, it's locked. They just lock on. You can't get your knife under, you can't do anything. Straight away. <laughs> The question is, what has he got this time? It's every cast of wrasse at the moment. Go for the cod. Cod on Go the for cod. Cod's on the menu. Put the cast in. Is that a cod cast? Just a little bit further. Oh, cod, cod cast. Oh, come on, bigger fish. Come on, bite, bite, bite. <laughs> I took your bait. Loses it. Same fish, but a range of colours. Milan just caught Codzilla. Cool fish. Yeah, look at that bluey green in the back. You think they're black, but they're not. Tide's coming in fast, and the boys have caught more than we need, so I think it's about done. I've got a little bit of awesome news for you. Well, it's really good news for myself and Milan because the boys have picked up a new partner for the lateral line, and that partner is Spiker. And Spiker do a large clothing range, and it'd be some like four odd years ago now, I got approached by a guy, Cam, who I knew through the hunting industry, and he's like, dude, I've just taken on Spiker, and it's a hunting clothing brand, and can I give you some gear and just take it out and thrash it and tell me what you think of it? Well, I've thrashed it for the last four years and I like it. And Milan's like, well, why don't we get Spiker on board for the lateral line? So I gave Milan Cam's phone number. Milan and Cam had a conversation and they have come to an arrangement. From here, moving forward, the boys are gonna be fully looked after, clothing-wise, by Spiker. And to say we are 
Grateful is a massive understatement. Churcher, brother Cam, and a massive churcher to all of the team within Spiker. It is awesome to be repping your brand, and I look forward to all of the new toys coming in the future. Now, I want to tell you all about a brand spanking new boat, fish, and dive expo coming to Mystery Creek in Hamilton later this year. But to do that, I've got to give you a little bit of a backstory. I've been going to the Seeker Show for the last two years, and all I've done there is just gone and helped out a good mate of mine, Simon, who has a taxi doomy stand at the Seeker Show. But while I was there, I got to see a little bit of the uh, inside runnings of the Seeker Show, and I got to see the overwhelmingly positive response from not only the people going to the show, but also the exhibitors. And I'm not the only one that thought that the Seeker Show was well run and awesome because Mike Penn, who is the man behind Seeker Show, has been approached by a number of people within the fishing, diving and boating arena and said, hey Mike, would you put together a boat, fish and dive expo at Mystery Creek in Hamilton. It's an awesome venue and you do an awesome job and it will be awesome all around. And I want to get in behind this thing as much as I possibly can. Mike is a really, really good man. I used to go to school with Mr. Mike Penn. I've done a little bit of hunting with the man. And again, I have really, really enjoyed the Seeker Show. So myself and Milan will be there and hopefully we will be there with our brand spanking new amphibious boat and our hybrid street machine. And again, I just want to see this thing be a success to the point where I've even volunteered myself and Milan to clip the tickets at the gate so we get to meet all of you as you are on your way into the expo. And while I'm on the topic of the gate, there is a massive gate prize. Just by buying a ticket, you're in the drawer. It is a huge adventure type trip down south with you and a bunch of your brothers and sisters. It would be awesome. If you want to contact Mike, his email is on the screen right now if you're an exhibitor or want to know anything about anything to do with fish, dive and boat expo. That's the man to talk to. And before I go, I got one <laughs> little fun fact for you. The kingfish that Milan caught off the beach, the first one, there were three of them. Milan casts out. The middle sized fish has a go at Milan's lure, misses. The littlest fish out of the three has a go at Milan's lure, and Milan hooks the fish. Then the biggest fish out of those three stole the lure out of the little fish's mouth and Milan caught the biggest kingfish out of the three. How's that? I thought that was pretty cool. Chur chur, my brothers and sisters. Thank you all so very, very much for watching, liking, and subscribing to The Lateral Line. Because of you, what we do is all possible, and I really enjoyed myself at the Chatham Islands. And one more show coming up for the Chatham Islands, and then the boys are back in the dinghy trying to catch something to eat. See you all again very, very soon.